Hello and welcome to the Monday, November 7th, 2022 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Got a couple interesting diaries from this weekend to talk about. First one by Xavier about a new version of these new to Xavier of Remco's downloader. This is one of those cases where the downloader has real low virus total recognition while the DLL file it's downloading has high recognition. You may now say, hey, you know, what's the point? Uh, the important, the dangerous part is the DLL. That's kind of true. But uh, with the downloader having such a low recognition, that of course means that an attacker just has to swap out the DLL and uh, can then still use the existing downloader that may be initially installed on your system. What may make this particular uh, downloader so hard to detect is in part the use of Unicode. And of course, a lot of tools have issues with uh, dealing properly with Unicode. That's probably something uh, that's uh, going to show up more and more as uh, more and more uh, programming languages also support uh, Unicode for the actual code. So uh, that requires that the tools analyzing the code will properly analyze and be able to figure out Unicode characters. And talk about relatively simple tricks to obfuscate your malware and make it difficult for anti-malware tools to detect. A Guy ran into a malicious executable that actually arrived as a .vhd file. .vhd is an extension for virtual hard disks. It kind of works like an ISO image in that you can open it in Windows and then you'll see whatever files are on it. In this case, well, it actually then is an executable that uh, when clicked will execute. He wasn't quite able uh, to uh, analyze it in the time he had uh, because, well, it uh, crashed sandboxes, which of course is another sort of typical technique that Malvern uses to make reverse analysis just a little bit more difficult. Not sure if anybody ever is uh, shipping around a virtual disk file as an email attachment, but uh, definitely one of those extensions you should pay attention to. And Film, if I pronounce the company name correctly, a supply chain protection company. Of course, we have tons of them these days. And one way they sort of try to distinguish themselves is by finding malicious Python packages that have been uh, published uh, to PyPy. And well, uh, that's usually not all that uh, difficult. The blog post published by Film, however, shows a couple of uh, pretty interesting tricks that the attacker used in order to make their malicious packages a little bit more difficult to detect. First of all, they used a very common sort of lookalike trick. They take an existing package. For example, one they took was the requests package, which of course is quite popular. They call it requests-htpx. And then they're going ahead and are adding additional code. The code they're adding here is specifically targeting developers. Once you install a Python package, the setup.py code in the package is executed and any malicious code placed in the file is of course executed as well. One of the earliest uh, attempts that uh, Philium has noticed was where they just sort of add a one-liner with a base64 encoded uh, command that then of course unwraps into a malware. That apparently was a little bit too obvious, uh, but uh, what it did next is kind of interesting in that you can in Python write two lines in one line if you put a semicolon in there. Well, uh, that is hardly ever used because everybody likes to indent their stuff uh, nicely and neatly in uh, Python. But in this case, it's essentially used uh, to push the malicious code off the line. Now, uh, how this appears, of course, depends a little bit on the editor uh, you're using. But in the example here shown by Philium, you don't really see uh, anything that's uh, sort of included in that extended line here by the attacker. The malicious code 
injected here is W4 SP Stealer. Uh, that's a script that uh, targets essentially secrets from the developers' machines, like uh, crypto coin wallets, uh, but also things like uh, developer uh, secrets. And luckily, not a ton of downloads, at least uh, for the packages that uh, Film uh, was able to identify. They counted about 5,700 downloads. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.